Matt, the Twilight Council has decided that you must review Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2. Council? What council? It's you, Mitzi, and Christian, man. Hi, I love Twilight. I know you do, bud. Matt, I'm sorry, but you must do this, or a great war will erupt. A great war? Over a fucking Twilight video? You have no idea. The Twihard army is a powerful foe. We have at last united Team Edward and Team Jacob. Yeah, because no one cares anymore. These movies are a decade old. Wait, a decade? That can't be right. No, he's right. Breaking Dawn Part 2 came out in, like, 2012. Fuck! Alright, uh, still, you must review it. You want a Breaking Dawn Part 2 video? I got a fucking Breaking Dawn Part 2 video for ya. There were some movies. Terrible movies. Movies so awful. No one would touch. Then came a Matt. Sad little Matt. Matt then decided. These movies to watch. Today's episode, The Twilight Saga Breaking Dawn Part 2. <sighs> Hello, Twihards. I'm Colt Mad, and man, Twilight was hilarious, but every subsequent film in the series is just a little bit less fun than the last one. Luckily, they turned it around for the last movie. This is Breaking Dawn Part 2. As you'll recall, part one ended with Edward turning Bella into a vampire, so here we see her getting used to it. It's pretty visually interesting, and it starts the movie on something other than Bella doing a moody voiceover. Her name's May. <laughs> it's still a stupid name. Ed tries to get her to catch a deer, but the smell of a hiker cutting himself catches her attention. And she eats a fucking cougar. And speaking of carnivorous animals whose names are associated with robbing the cradle, Jacob's at the house taking care of Nessie. I refuse to call her by her given name. And here it is, the notorious CG baby. I mean, it's off-putting, but also a film set is not really a good place for a baby, so... Eh? Also, Jacob's being weirdly protective. What's that about? Okay, so there's been a lot of discourse about Jacob imprinting on Bella's infant daughter, and I want to be very clear, I, I don't think Jacob is like a creepy guy for this. He didn't have any control over it. I think Stephanie Meyer is creepy for this. She absolutely had control over it. Ed's really enjoying this fight, and I am totally with him. From the beginning, it was Nessie who wanted me there. Nessie? You nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster?! Bella, that is so not important right now. After she cools off, the Cullens give she and Ed a house? Which seems like some favoritism. The other Cullen couples don't have houses. Except they're also talking about skipping town, so... What is this, just like a house we're keeping for a few days while we get packed up and move out? But Jake doesn't want them to leave, so he reveals the existence of werewolves to Charlie. Jacob, put your clothes on. Something that does not appear once in the stage directions. This kind of seems like a selfish thing he's doing, but also the Cullens were just going to tell Charlie Bella died, which is way more of a dick move. Charlie and Bella have a heartfelt scene that is immediately followed by a goofy scene of Emmett testing Bella's strength, and then she glitters. Cousin Irina fucking snitches to the Voltori about Nessie, and thank god because this movie was starting to drag. Come on with the plot! We get this pretty hardcore backstory about the immortal children, a group of adolescent vampires who couldn't be controlled and were ultimately killed. Just fucking cooked a baby in a Twilight movie. So they gotta go around and prove to everyone that Nessie isn't a vampire. So we get to see a bunch of vampires from around the world, including Rami Malik, who's the fucking Avatar. Benjamin can influence the elements. Who are they? 
Santa and Zafrina from the Amazon. Yeah, I remember that show. <laughs> I was a total Zafrina, but my brother was such a Sinna. We even get to see vampires who, like, kill people. This is shaping up to be the most violent Twilight film yet. Finally, we meet the last of them. Alistair, come meet everyone. Ah, come on. A character named after Alistair Crowley in this fantasy novel adaptation starring Michael Sheen. What a dumb idea. And while Carlisle only wanted them to witness Nessie, they all agree to fight the Voltori if it comes to that. Bella works on her power of shielding people from other vampire powers. But Alice and Jasper, who've been AWOL since the Voltori got involved, have Bella meet up with a guy who's made her fake passports for Nessie and Jacob. But none for Bella. My dearest Renesme, I thought we would have forever together. But forever isn't as long as I'd hoped. Uh, they're just disappearing until this Voltori thing blows over, right? Like, you, you'll see her again. Except they don't even disappear. They're at the Voltori fight. What, what was the point of all this? Also, Charlie's still dating that werewolf woman. I never thought I'd want a Twilight spinoff this bad. We were honest about what we were. We sat still for a very long time. We did not notice we were beginning to petrify. Oh, finally, some gay vampires. You know Anne Rice didn't make us wait this long. She had those guys in novel one. But we're finally here. The climactic battle against my chemical romance. I, I, I mean the Voltori. And man, Michael Sheen goes off in this. Ah, young Belle. Immortality becomes you. <laughs> it's honestly a welcome performance after how much underacting is going on in the franchise. They determine no laws have been broken, but everyone's itching for a fight anyways. But Alice returns, just in time for the movie to... just cut back and forth between her and Michael Sheen for an awkwardly long amount of time. It doesn't matter what I show you. Even when you see, you still won't change your decision. Oh boy, does this mean it's time to start kicking? My man fucking executes Daddy Cullens and the battle is on. And they're killing off all the characters. Jasper dies, one of the wolves, I, I think it's Seth, bites it, the gay Russians, not to mention a lot of Voltori, including whichever Fanning sister this is. Bob, throw me! Finally, Michael Sheen is defeated and we cut back to the field before the battle because it was what Alice was showing him the whole time. Now look, I, I get that it's kind of a bad, dumb twist, but it gave us a cool action scene full of stuff that never could have been a part of the real story. But if I may, I, I do think there was one thing they could have done to improve this. They show us that Nessie has the ability to show people visions, so make this what Nessie shows him, not Alice. This is Nessie's story. She's very central to it. Alice is just sort of there. I get that having an it was all a vision twist is gonna be lame either way, but I think this would have at least been a little better. Anyways, then Alice reveals there's another vampire child who's been around 150 years without detection. Who, who decided to show up to Forks, Washington in the winter shirtless. Gosh, this franchise loves itself some topless Native American boys. And everyone lived happily ever after. So should I start calling you dad? Dude, it's already weird. Don't make it worse. And we end on a dramatic montage of everything that's happened so far. And that, my friends, is the conclusion to the Twilight Saga, one of the biggest franchises of all time. And as a movie, it can be a mixed bag quality-wise, but all of it is entertaining. 
This isn't the first Twilight where my enjoyment is entirely down to how hilariously awkward it is. There's stuff that unironically works here. But there's still a lot of hilariously awkward stuff. All the cool foreign vampires and the giant battle give this a pretty epic scope. And while splitting the last book into two movies was a pretty annoying trend, it kinda works for Twilight, the franchise that loves to shove conflict in at the very end of the story. Here though, the conflict has the whole movie to be developed, so it ends up having the strongest narrative of the series. And I love how brutal they got with this one. I've seen horror and action movies that seemed scared to go where this fucking Twilight movie went. But there's still the odd line, delivery, or plot beat that gets an unintended laugh out of me. The Twilight Saga got off to an awkward start and spent the rest of the franchise trying to find its footing, and while it's almost there, it probably needed another movie or two to be something genuinely good. But fuck if they didn't make something wildly entertaining. By all means, watch this movie. It's a blast. Oh, and I guess there was that twist at the end. It's kind of a weird, out-of-nowhere thing. I can't imagine doing something like that. And that's what it'd be like if I did a Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2 review. Uh, I mean, that just seemed like a normal episode of your show. Why didn't you just make that video? Uh, I'm lazy? Yeah, fair enough. Twilight Council leaves you at the east. Sweet. part of the Twilight Council? Eh, actually this was our one and only mission. We're disbanding after this. God oh, damn. I'll start a Twilight Council with you. Yeah, it wouldn't be the same. <laughs>